Welcome, I am Emir, and let's look back in hindsight. This video is part of a long series. Bitin Serie, Fair Use Saga, Linux Mint Saga. To watch the full video, click the link on the end screen. Or in the description. Thank you. Chapter 8 LTS Reset From a code base reset to code base resets all the time to a desktop environment reset. It is not rare for chapters in the Linux Mint Saga to begin with a reset. This time, Mint had its LTS, Long-Term Strategy Reset. 17. Kiana Not Kiana The fourth Mint LTS release dropped on 31 May 2014. The first three LTS releases were supported for three years. Kian A would be supported for five. The first three Mint LTS versions were based on the then current Ubuntu LTS release. Kiana would be the same, based on Ubuntu 14.04 Trusty Tar. However, the Mint team announced that future versions until 2016 would use the same packages as Kiana, not the most recent Ubuntu non-LTS release. Work on a new base would not begin until 2016, when the next Ubuntu LTS release would come out. What did this mean? Something amazing, I guess? The next three versions of Mint would use the Ubuntu 14.04 LTS base. This shook the status quo. Kabog, if you will. Before this, all Mint versions after 5 Elisa was based on the most recent Ubuntu release. Usually, only from a month before. Spoilers, what happened next would seem to be a return to the pre-ELISA status quo. The newest release building on top of the previous Mint release. With its base ultimately traceable to 2.0 Barbara. Well, until Ubuntu drops the latest LTS version. And then, gotta spin, spin, gotta spin it around. Version numbers of releases until 2016 would reflect the shared base with 17 Kiana. 17.1 for end 2014, 17.2 for mid 2015, and 17.3 for end 2015. Curiously, Kiana was Kiana. Version 17, not 17.0, nor 17.0. What else was new in Kiana? The Cinnamon System Settings UI became consistent with better categorization. 
but this meant removing the option to show all settings and to switch modes. Still better than how Windows 10 and 11 manage settings. The screensaver, lock screen, and power management settings were clearly separated. Brightness settings got more options, and all its options were reshuffled. The original date and time settings returned. And the 24 hour clock could be enabled not only to spices, but also to the lock screen. I talked about edge tiling and edge snapping in 16 Petra. A box would appear before tiling or snapping a window. That box is called HUD. Don't ask me what it means. In previous Cinnamon versions, HUD would appear even if the window was nowhere near the edge. Never mind that the user does not want to tile or snap the window. Seeing HUD flash every time would be annoying. Just like Kuzco not learning anything. Wow, rhyme. In Kiana, HUD would appear only when the window is really close to the edge. I had to explain all that because the release notes was Error 404! HUD not found! I found out what HUD was in a thread in which Someone wanted a bigger threshold for HUD. In short, asking in October 2023 of a reversal of a feature introduced in 31 May 2014. What a twist! Hot corners for activating the scale and expo views we're now disabled by default to make them hot corners less annoying. How a hot corner would be activated could also be changed, either by hover or on click. This feature met the same fate as making the hot corner icon visible, present since at least 13 Maya. Applets would now tell Cinnamon which system tray icons to hide. If these applets would be disabled, the tray icons they replaced would return, and vice versa. For example, if the sound applet is on, the VLC icon would be gone. More poet. The sound applet could also show directly on the panel or taskbar the track name and cover art of the song playing. That is, if you're fine with the cramped panel. Finally, the sound applet could support MPRIS or MPRIS. I don't like how MPRIS sounds. MPRIS, which I think means controlling the applet using the keyboard. Cinnamon's menu applet, start menu. Now allowed on installing an app via right click and highlighted newly installed applications. 
Not only was the main team playing catch up with Windows. No, no, no. It was playing catch up with itself. This was a mint menu feature that first appeared in 9 Isadora. Mint menu is for Gnome 2 slash Mate. I should have said mint menu features, but... Eh. See them flat lines. Let's just carry on. The welcome screen received both skin deep and under the hood changes. So did the update manager. A new type column allowed differentiating between updates, depending on their source repository, aka where they came from. Software sources now show the warning against backported packages, bringing new features to old systems, and unstable packages, features still under testing, from the Romeo repository. Get it, Romeo? Samantha mod, I guess. Security updates could now bypass safety levels. The numbers on the left side. A user could choose to always make security updates visible or not and to always select them or not. Key here is or not. A choice. Because Mint is no Windows, nor Mac OS. History of updates would cover all updates. Not just updates installed through the Update Manager. Linux kernels would show information about all kernels in the system. LMDE6 does not have this feature. Again, don't ask me why. The driver manager could now install drivers offline. The Mint team name drop. Quote, laptops equipped with Broadcom wireless chipsets. Unquote. I spoiled this earlier. This helped me. No need to plug in a USB Wi-Fi adapter. But your mileage may vary. MDM could set a background color or background picture for every greeter. The default login theme would allow logging into hidden accounts by typing the username. Yet. There's still no way graphically to hide a user account. So much for ease of use. No comfort. MDM could also detect the language and session and pre selects them by default. This pre selection led to the cinnamon on Wayland issue I mentioned. If a user could not log in, the settings of the login screen could be reset. The release notes calls this recovery. But there is no way to reset the password from here. On screen is a list of other improvements in MDM. A language settings tool for all flavors of the main edition, not just Cinnamon. And for LMDE, allowed changing the language and installing or removing languages. Finally, system and artwork improvements in Kiana. 
Kianas Cinnamon and Mate flavors came in 32 and 64 bit, plus the No Codex and OEM 32 and 64 bit variants. KDE and XFCE 32 and 64 bit flavors were also made. Along with the code base change, came changes to the mint team. Frederick Gooday took over maintaining the KDE edition from Boo. Meanwhile, Clem took over all other editions. Six months later, came the first Mint Point One release since 3.1 Selina from September 2007. 17.1 Rebecca, cheater, cheater. Unlike the Mint team, I can think of names starting in Q and ending in A. Quina, Quella, Kiara. Kweta. Okay, that one's the last name. Am I violating data privacy right now? I bet you someone would make an ARG about the lost mint versions, lost media, starting with Q and ending in A. Just like Longhorn. They would promise much, but fail to deliver. Or you know, those experiments that never got episodes. Where were we? Oh, seventeen point one, Rebecca, dropping on twenty nine November twenty fourteen. Like Kiana, Rebecca was also based. On Ubuntu 14.04 Trusty Tar. Also, like its predecessor, Rebecca was an LTS release, meaning it would receive security updates until 2019. Before that, Mint LTS releases drop after every two years. Spoilers: All Mint releases. From here on out, would be LTS. The default MDM theme featured a slideshow. MDM settings, now called Login Window Preferences, was redesigned. The concept of greeters was confusing, so themes were no longer sorted by greeters. A preview button, in the form of an easy-to-miss gear, was also added. The login screen backend also received changes. The language settings introduced in 17 Kiana was redesigned just one version later. Language and region were separated. Because Pinoy ako Pinoy tayo, but spoken in English. Input methods for non-Latin alphabet languages could be installed. An input method would come with all the languages that used it. The update manager now group related packages. To make sure that all would be installed, all for one, not one for all, all or nothing. If that makes sense, the Linux kernels window also received the facelift. Again, just like Pinoy money, with an install or remove. Kernel button. The Mint X theme now came with colors called accents. To quickly find favorite folders, 
their color can be changed through right click. This was adopted from the Folder Color Project and Elementary OS and still exists in modern Nemo, even if it is easier to just pin the folder. Rebecca Ship with Cinnamon 2.4, which came with new notifications settings. Nothing like rules and alerts though. Privacy settings. Something that Mac OS should have. Array based network settings. Rebased, another reset. And redesigned theme and background settings. A slideshow could be set as background, which could be paused or resumed using the slideshow applet. Could Windows 10 do that? All Windows 10 could do is move to the next image. Which, yes, Rebecca could also do. Buttons could be added to Nemo. And emblems could be added to files and directories. No tags though. No way to set relationships between files. I still want that. Other new features in Rebecca Cinnamon included the Super Plus E shortcut to open the home folder. Single button touchpad a la MacBook. I don't know why you'd want that though. And customizable desktop font. Cinnamon continued to mature and other changes were introduced to the rest of the system. Rebecca came with the same variants as Kiana. LMDE would also go the way of Kiana and have its own development reset. Switching from a month behind from Debian testing to Debian stable. This meant LMDE would finally reach version 2 with Betsy on 10 April 2015. LMDE would continuously receive updates once available. No need to wait for the next main edition release. Cinnamon and Mate flavors of LMDE2 were released. New Betsy ISOs were released, jumping ahead, on 13 March 2017. 17.2 Rafaela saw the light, fresh from the sewers, on 30 June 2015. Seven months after 17.1 Rebecca. Another LTS release. Another release with an Ubuntu 14.04 Trusty Tar package base. Enter the keyboard shortcut to restart Cinnamon. Control Alt Escape. This feature has saved me when windows don't seem to resize. And tooltips from YAR, yet another RSS reader, stick around. And would have saved me from the pain in the behind that was 17.1 Rebecca. Well, all Mint versions running on VirtualBox 7.1. Cinnamon received back-end changes. Pause to read. But we will focus on the visual ones that don't require setting up multiple monitors. With support for X Screen Saver and HTML5, Cinnamon could show animated 
screensavers. Panels could go hide and seek using IntelliHide. For windows that stretch to the space covered by the panel, it, the panel, disappears. If a window does not go that far, the panel stays. Applets could now be placed on the center, even if the left and right zones have no applets. So icons of running apps could be placed in the middle, long before Windows 11 wanted to cosplay Mac OS. Or not. The new inhibit applet would ensure that presentations go smoothly. The new on-screen keyboard applet worked like the touch keyboard on Windows 10. Other applets, user, network, sound, and power, also received improvements. System settings got a facelift. Yes, I'm sticking with that. Facelift. Effect settings for Windows became simpler. Plus, new effects. The separate power brightness and battery settings merge. And startup application no longer feels out of place. A new plugin manager, the boot with Nemo. File operations would now run one after the other, instead of at the same time. Useful for hard disks, HDDs, to avoid the fragmentation. Not sure for SSDs, solid state drives. Open as root would keep the password. So there's no need to enter it every time. Software sources could now be used to browse PPAs and to downgrade packages that don't match the official versions as found in the repositories. Update Manager, Language Settings, and MDM also got improvements. Here is a list of other changes. Finally, Rafaela had the same variants as its predecessor. Seventeen point three Vintage but also youthful Rosa was released on four december twenty fifteen, five months after Rafaela. This was the first Linux Mint Point 3 release, and the last under the 17 line. As an LTS release, Rosa would be supported until 2019. Rosa shipped with Cinnamon version 2.8, with new features shown in this video, which is not yet lost media. The sound applet became closer in functionality to the media player tile for Carl sidebar with an interactive progress bar. The only thing missing is visualizations. Changing input and output devices could be done through the right click context menu. I wish it were possible to add that feature back to the applet though. Since there are times my USB microphone, even if plugged in, is not the one detected for recording. Imagine three hours wasted. All that was captured was noise. Gone are the generic wireless mouse labels for connected devices. They would now be identified by name. 
Now, for some panel slash taskbar related updates. The Workplace Switcher applet shows how windows appear in every workplace. The system tray would support indicators. Window thumbnails could be displayed on the group window list applet. Software sources now detected the user's location and would begin the speed test with nearby mirrors. The tool could now also detect if a mirror's content is out of date. Update Manager would also do mirror detection, including the classic switch to a local mirror. Driver Manager would sort drivers by status and shows if drivers are open source. Why open source? Did a deep dive on that already. Display settings showed not only the name of the monitor, but also the port where each monitor is connected to. Here are other changes in ROSA. ROSA came with the same variants as Rafaela. Let me know what you thought of this video. Comment below. Please like and share this video on social media. Subscribe and ring the bell. Watch all Emir's Biten. Balik tanaw slash in hindsight. Support the show on Patreon, on PayPal, or through crypto. Thank you to my sibling, G-G Arts, for my avatar. Check out and support her work by clicking the links in the description. To watch the full video, the link should come up here on the end screen. Now. Thanks for watching. Stay safe and take care.